Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. All right, so we had a back test of the trading ranges today in QQQ. In fact, a perfect back test. Uh, you can see I'm referring to the August uh, trading ranges there, the entire month of August uh, into early September. Uh, we back tested today almost perfectly. I had that line about 189 right there. You know, give or take, we've had a couple pierces below. We had a low, low of 188.91. So uh, that's the story. Uh, trend indicators, some still remain on sell signals. Depends on the time frame, uh, some on buy signals. And uh, nothing's really changed since my last update. Either this is a successful back test. That's what bulls want to see. Um, I'll get to SPY in a second. SPY has not yet back tested, but I maintain, you know, at most there's a minimal upside here because any new marginal high, marginal new high, just like all the previous ones, well, marginal talking just one, two, three percent, and followed by correction. That's been the mo uh, on all these when when you have divergence. So uh, again breakouts to new highs that occur uh, with negative divergence in place uh, more often not fail and what I'm talking about there just extend this divergence line that we already had in place right there and should we pop any higher uh, you can see it will be uh, uh, and it's simply an extension of the existing divergences. So that's what happened on the daily chart. And until and unless the big levels, besides the trading range, which again, we may enter this with QQQ because SPY, I'm going to get to in a second, has not yet entered that. Uh, the If I had to pick just one level on this chart, one line, one level to watch, it's that trend line off the lows on December 24th. I have QQQ, XLK, and a lot of market leading stocks uh, flirting with this uh, trend line here. Uh, so lots of lots of reactions recently so that's the big level to watch and it's not you know relatively speaking you know if you back out uh, all this stuff it's not that far below it's really what I like to say one bad day away meaning it's about a two per two percent below current levels and we could certainly take that out with one bad day and the upside again if we bounce and put in a marginal new high uh, from where we close today uh, you know, it's hard to say exactly where it comes in. Maybe at this point on QQQ, 5% or so um, before a reversal. So uh, we need to watch these levels. Uh, again, successful test today so far, but not really an impulsive. Um, they didn't really step in and buy it impulsively. This is what it looks like on the 60-minute chart. This QQQ, the level there, I have it at 189.40 on my 60-minute chart. You can see uh, the top of the range here and uh, that blue line. Boom, back tested it, tr tested it all day, a little ramp into the close, uh, short covering rally, whatever you want to call it, or people buying off that level. Uh, but that was just the final minutes of trading, as you can see, uh, when there's a lot of position squaring going on with the funds and ETFs. Oh, there it is. Thought my chart wasn't going to load. So that was it. So most of the day, you can see up until the final minutes of trading, we spent hugging and testing that level. Oh, that's a one minute chart I just flipped to there. So that's what it looks like in QQQ. So as of now, successful test. And like I said, bulls want to see that. 60 minute chart shows that uh, even on the 60 minute chart, should we push up and make a marginal new high anytime soon, it'll be a divergent high right there. And that's just, these are the uh, indicators. Uh, so again, looking at. Uh, you know, in the 60-minute chart, if we pop in, pop up tomorrow, make a marginal new high, or any time this week, you're talking from where we close. I'm trying to get it there. Bad, yeah, one, maybe one percent, and that's also that uh, resistance level. I said we could reverse that about not 192.88 or so. So that's what it looks like on QQQ spy. Uh, we did not back test. I'll get to this 60-minute chart in a second. Let me just go over to my daily chart here and show you what it looks like. So here's spy. SPY already took out the trend line off the lows on the 24th, back tested for a while, and it's, you know, back testing again today. If we, here it is, uh, you know, try to come in and grab all these reactions right here. December 24th, reaction low from early June. We broke down, back tested, back tested, and we had the trading range in blue there. And so there's SPY. As you can see, SPY hasn't yet to um, back test. In the video I did for members earlier today, or one of the videos, there's a couple takeaways. The fact that QQQ, as I showed you a minute ago, has already come in for a full back test confirms what I'm seeing in the individual components, and that is weakness in, most importantly, some of the market-leading names, uh, the top components, and not just the top five or top ten, about in the top 20 or so, a lot of big names. I'll touch on those real quickly. That 
tilts my uh, barometer back to uh, a little more bearish um, than before. Now I, you know, I continue to maintain. I expect this. We'll see what happens. You know, if we do anything more than a marginal new high and blast off, then I'm just dead wrong. But as of now, you know, my convictions are are pretty high that at best we have a marginal new high here in SPY, and we're talking in SPY. What would that be if we popped up there in the next week or two? About not even three percent. Uh, so before I'd expect a reversal, and that may or may not even you know we may not even pop up that high. But again, this week is going to be telling. Well, let's see what happens if SPY comes in for a back test. But again, the fact QQQ already made a full back test shows since the breakout last Thursday, when the, when SPY and QQ both broke above the trading ranges, uh, I'm seeing distribution selling and technical breakdowns or very some of these stocks very close to breaking down in the market leading NASDAQ 100 and that's what it's all about make no mistake about it I've said it once I've said it a thousand times this market is all about tech you want to see where the market's going watch XLK when tech breaks the market breaks there's your trend line I have a dual trend lines I have the same one on QQQ and a lot of other key stocks off December 24th very very well defined that's that first trend line here I'll color the second one I'll give it a different color right here and I'll call that an alternative trend line they come in roughly together so it's really no no difference if one goes the other's gonna go that's it uh, and uh, like the market you know the tech stocks pop up off well I'll just grab from uh, yesterday's high you're talking maybe two percent three percent uh, it would certainly be any high this week, any new high in the in the tech sector and the markets that occurs in the next week or two is 100% guaranteed to be a divergent high. That doesn't guarantee it has to fail, but from you know my experience, much 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 more often than not, uh, breakouts that occur with such clear negative divergences like this. Uh, let me delete this line here. Uh, do end up failing. Uh, so where's my uh, delete line? There we go. Delete. All right, so that's it. That's what it would look like. Extend these lines, and um, yeah, it's my, we'll call it my more bullish of the two scenarios. A little pop, a couple percent above, two, three percentage points above the recent highs. Go in, reverse, put in divergent high, and then go on to break down, and then go on to break the lows of the uh, September or August trading ranges. And uh, with tech breaks, of course, that's when the market breaks. It's happened here, happened here and uh, it will happen here sooner than later I believe. Okay so let's just talk about a few tech stocks uh, I'm watching. Microsoft, the world's largest publicly traded company, the largest component of the QQQ, NASDAQ 100, S&P 500, SPY, uh, that broke down. There's the trend line off the lows on the 24th. I have it in yellow and then I added um, since the video today for members I gave what I, what I call a BOD benefit of the doubt trend line because uh, you, you had a few breaks below intraday breaks before and you had stick saves a lot of stick saves here a stick save is when you break support during the day uh, but that candlestick uh, closes back up above the uh, support level by the end of the day uh, so that's what we call stick save not the same as a hockey stick save but same net effect because these are candlesticks of course and um, so you can see there stick save quite a few there on that line so it broke the primary trend line but again you and I have, if you want, you can come in and capture. There's one, two, you can see two reaction lows. And so we can say it's a stick save here. And here's the thing as well. If I had Apple, all the other stocks breaking down too, I would say this one uh, will probably not prove to be. In other words, I would probably say this one will, was a breakdown and will probably follow through. But we need to see a few more of those market leaders. Um, but again, I'm going to show you right now, quite a few have already broken down. Trend indicator is still bullish. That's PPO signal line. Uh, the white line is still above the zero line. So these are things I'm watching. Uh, the, the 9 EMA is your signal line on the PPO. And when it's above this dotted dash line, the zero line, the trend's bullish. You know, be long, boom, play. When it goes down, breaks down below, like right here, boom, tells you where well, you have an intermediate bearish trend. Cross bullish right here, boom, bullish trend. And it's stayed above since. So this is what we'll watch if you see this I can tell you with a high degree of confidence you'll probably see the market break down if Microsoft comes through there with conviction uh, breaks down there is support right here about 13050 but if that happens you're gonna take the trend indicator down you're gonna take as Microsoft again the top weighted component in the large cap indexes you're gonna take it down below that key trend line support uh, 130 
and then if 130.50 goes and that should be it and it'll probably take the rest of the market down with it but of course we have to watch the rest of the lot and the rest of the lot would be uh, Apple trendline support right here that's the trend line I'm really focused on this one right here off the early June lows was that late May early June uh, yeah early June uh, at resistance here's where it failed before you know Apple keeps failing. This was a very, very important support level breakout, all-time highs, very bullish, a lot like the stock market, but it did so on a divergent high, and then, boom, the rest was history. Back here, tech broke, the market broke, big drop in Apple. Came back to that level, failed. Came back, failed. Came back here, well, we'll see if it fails or not, but it's at resistance, and so we're kind of sandwiched between support and resistance. Now, we could pop it. If they pop it, it kind of meshes with that uh, new divergent nominal or marginal new high theme. Let's draw it out here in Apple. So we have already had negative divergence at the recent high. So if Apple pops, it's going to be a breakout. Everybody sees that. You don't have to be an expert in TA to see, wow, 216.40 ish is a big level. So if they pop it, you're going to see a stop pop. All the shorts, you'll see longs pile in. Um, but in doing so, you're going to bring up this indicator. If, uh, if that breakout doesn't stick, if it fails, a couple things will happen. You'll have negative divergence right here, number one. You'll have a failed breakout, a.k.a. bull trap, if we fall back down below 216.40, you know, much below it. And you also have the potential to break this trend line. So boom, 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 three things at once. That's what I'm looking for on Apple. It hasn't happened yet, but if it does, that's where things start to happen fast, I believe, in the market. If that happens and Microsoft happens, what I just showed you there, uh, things would probably start to go to the downside very fast. So Apple is above support. Zero sell signals right now. It's simply at resistance. Uh, may break out. And let's see if it does break out. How does that look? How, how long does it continue to remain above that level? Uh, do they build on those gains or does it get sold into? And uh, now we go down the line, and I'm just going through the top weighted. These are the top weighted components in XLK, the tech sector, and they're also top weighted components in the NASDAQ 100 QQQ. Visa broke down, boom, uh, breakdown. I gave it a benef benefit of the doubt trend line, but really, this trend line um, that's not the important one. This was the trend line right here. This white one broke down, impulsive today solid red close below uh, there's a stock to me I can say with a high degree of confidence is going lower and going much lower uh, it's partner in crime MasterCard same story breakdown uh, Intel Intel's doing well right now um, coming up to resistance can't knock that one let me find some some are doing okay and that's the theme here is that uh, it's kind of a mixed bag today but uh, you have quite a few breaking down there's Adobe breaking down saved by the 200 day moving average if that red line the 200 day may goes this one's done it broke support right here so there's another stock to me it looks like it's headed lower uh, you know Accenture again tech stocks these are all tech stocks PayPal boom big breakdown so there's a common theme I am seeing a lot of market leaders breaking down I've got some others I'm not going to show you click on here because I have price targets and I've shared these as official or unofficial trade ideas. I might share them as official trade ideas. But that's the common theme right now. Quite a few market leaders in the most important sector, that by far the top weighted sector in the stock market, technology, starting to break down. So a mixed bag. You know, like I said, if I look at just the indexes in a vacuum, go back to QQQ, I said, hey, you know, things look fine right now. Uh, you know, if I was bullish and I didn't have the ability to look at the individual stocks, the individual components of this sector, I'd say, you know what? Uh, great. So far, a breakout and a successful back test. You can, you can buy it. And you still can. I'll say this now. You can buy that breakout and put a stop somewhat below. Uh, if you're bullish, uh, obviously, a stop below this trend line would be ideal. And uh, maybe we go on to new highs and beyond. But uh, again, I think, like I said, that would be my most bullish scenario and more bearish would be if we just all of a sudden you know futures tank overnight we don't even get that I'm sure a lot of eyes I mean it almost it almost looks like a done deal I know that might sound odd to some of you guys when I look at a chart you know looking at the posture the indicators how close we are usually when you get that close to an all-time high in a security of the markets you end up breaking it at least by a marginal amount uh, so it almost looks like baked in the cake um, but then again, I'm a little skeptical because of that. And as I said, with Microsoft and some other big ones breaking down, if there's more downside tomorrow, if they don't get saved by the rest of the group, 
which they might because like I said Microsoft was only a little bit below that primary trend line and that's just one some of the others as well that I just showed you Visa MasterCard and then I can put in those benefit of the doubt trend lines with you know if you come in and catch the you know the small little candlestick shadows or tails down below and so uh, that's where we're at so we're pretty much in a precarious technical posture in the markets as we have been for a while you know same story we've been dancing on on that support this trend line support for uh, over a month now and so that's it keep it pretty simple um, not going to get into a detailed analysis we'll cover you know uh, members I did a video today and put up some charts I'll get out to you uh, we'll look at the uh, charts of gold silver platinum uh, crude oil I put up some posts on crude oil I actually covered that in the video today Nat gas oh the energy sector so there's a lot there other than the broad market right now I'm looking at um, but uh, for now Let's see how these uh, these uh, recent trading ranges are resolved. Do we start walking away from them now that QQQ is backtest, or will SPY want to come in now and backtest uh, at the top of its range, which it didn't do so far? So to be continued, we'll pick it up tomorrow. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.